Hello, good again. This is Janice from Measuring to Fit, greeting you from beautiful Malaysia, sunshine in the morning uh, today. So um, just like to show you once more uh, this uh, scrap project that I did and I made a lab piece out of it, joining uh, all the panels. Um, I just wanted to uh, share with you, uh, does it mean that when we do pieces like this, we only can make uh, blankets, um, lab pieces and big pieces i uh, the other day i was thinking about it and i was uh, thinking hmm, can i make a garment out of it uh, if you remember actually i shared uh, using this this kind of fabric that i um panel of fabric i actually made a patch pocket uh, which is uh, what i'm wearing now here a patch pocket on my blouse uh, on a plain blouse yeah but i'm thinking can i actually make a, a garment out of it and i did you see, um, in my beginner's course, I actually, uh, one of the parts, uh, I show you how to make uh, what we'll call uh, elastic waistband skirt. And it is suitable for, I, I think it is it's suitable for toddlers right and uh, little girls to wear. So this is, the, this is one of the parts in my sewing course. Yes, and then from here, we can actually, uh, we, uh, I also will show you how to do this, which is add a decorative stitch to your hem to give the, uh, some details on the skirt. And then after that, I also introduced this where we made a two-tier skirt. It's the same skirt except that we cut it, uh, we make a panel, two panels out of it, and then um, make a skirt that is a two-tiered. So the other day, because I was thinking, hmm, can I actually use this, right, and, and make a skirt? And actually, I did. So this is the same concept. I used the whole panel whole panel filled uh, with these scrap pieces in slanted, the strips, right, in slanted format, right? If you go and check out check out my uh, my my earlier videos or even go to my YouTube, you can actually find um, the, um, the video on this, how to do this kind of panel. And I actually made these skirts with the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the panels, that is uh, from the strip. So here, because we use a backing, right? So then the, it is like a natural lining at the bottom. So I joined the piece and made a toddler skirt, right? So that's why I love this. I, I love using up all my scraps because if, if we are into sewing, we will have lots of scraps. So today is also another, <coughs> excuse me, another scraps project right if you are interested in my um if you you're interested if i ha have somehow inspired you why i do all this tutorial is so inspire you to want to start with sewing and i help guide you in the beginners a, per a person who totally do not know right and i will guide you into sewing managing your machine and also uh, with the techniques you can do a lot of things and will leave it to your creativity to make uh make all the things that you you can think of right with the techniques that you learn right so today i am also doing because i really love using up the scraps that is uh, that i have leftovers from all my projects so i'm making this tote bag and i call this an adventure tote bag adventure because i i just came up with this idea in my head and I, I did it and recorded the process of it. I uh, did it, recorded it, and it, it is successful. So that's why I decided that I will share it in this, uh, uh, share the whole process, which is four episodes of this Toad Adventure. So throughout it is something that I have not done before. So I call it a, 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 an adventure because 
It's not that I made it, I test it out, and only I show you. Actually, I take you along with my adventure journey and uh, see whether the idea I have in my head worked. Okay, so what I did was I used, because my scraps pieces will have odd, odd shapes like this, and I applicate it onto a packing piece. Similar method as this, this one, we have a packing piece as well. So I'm going to use a packing piece and then applique on my scraps on top using the zigzag stitch. Once more, okay, in, in part two of my beginner's course, actually, I show you how to use the zigzag stitches and what are the things to look out for when you sew with zigzag and when you can use zigzag. So that is in my beginner's course. So all these things I will tell you in the course. So back to this project, right? So I do this and then because it's very busy, so many, I uh, mean, different, different type of uh, scraps are used to join it. I decided to again combine this with a plane, which I use a plain red. So I have one panel and then one plane, one panel scrap and then another plane here. So that is the front part. And then the back is similar again. And then the side, I use all the scraps to make the side, which, which is one piece that makes out of the handle. And here, I the, 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 the strap is actually two pieces like this and then tie it so that it is on your shoulder. And you can carry it just this way. So here is the knot. So this is what my idea is, and it is right. The seams, I write them. So we have this. Then the other feature of this bag is because I have the inner, inner backing, right? So I have the inner backing, and this is the inner backing. After I sew all those at the front, I get all this design on the backing piece. So I join this backing again with another plain fabric. In this case here is a white because this is a green. So inside is the backing and then the green. And it's a two-way back. You can use it from the inside out as well. And this one has no simmer. As in, you can see that it doesn't have all the racks. So we can carry the bag both ways, with the rack or with this design on the inside. So two-way bag. So actually, I'm very excited to show you. So because it's four parts today, I'm just showing you how to make this panel. Make this panel. This panel. Um, Okay, can I show you the panel? I will show you how to make this panel. How to applique on the scraps onto a packing and do it. So just to give you the, the, the panel, the panel measurements is this way lengthwise 16 inch and the broadness of the panel is 5 inches. So 16 and 5 inches. That's the that's the the size that I use here. Do you have to follow this? No, you can make it according to what you want. If you decide that you want to make this, right? You can also do a, a variation of what I show here today because I just want to inspire you and give you ideas. So just let me now to pick to make the panel for our tote bags. So this we will need the um, lining piece which we will need we will use as the foundation as well so this is one of this is the first piece that i have done right so uh, we are going to applique on the top pieces of scraps onto this foundation pieces so this is what happened when i applique right so 
I'm using the same color, the thread, upper thread, as the other panel color I'm using. So I have matched it. So I have also chosen the fabric that I'm going to use for this to make them uh, not so random and jumble up, right? So I'm using the same. So I have here one fabric, one fabric, one, two, three, four. This and this is the same. So one, two, three, four, five, five fabric. So I have here one. This is this fabric, and this is this fabric. Yes, and this is this fabric, and then I have this fabric as well. So I'm going to use the same fabric so that the two panels. Although they will not be the same, but they are, they still have the same color scheme because I'm using the same fabric. So, okay. So, what I'm going to do is I will have this one piece here. This is the foundation, which is also my lining, right? And uh, let's see when... Yes, this is the... This is the wrong side. This is the right side. Right, so wrong side of the lining, I'm going to place a big piece first. Right, I am placing perhaps this long big piece that will stretch across the whole length of this. Right, and I'm going to applique this on. Maybe I will put this one end. Right? And I will applique around all of it first. Okay? And be back to add on the others. Let me arrange the machine and come back to you. I just thought I want to show you the setting on my machine. Right? Every machine, your your you, you could be having a dull or a slider. My machine, my Juki, I'm having a slider, right? So I want to tell you I'm choosing the zigzag which is the B here. That's why my choice is B here. Right? And my stitch length, this is the stitch length dial. I have chosen it 1. And my stitch size, I've chosen it 5. Right? I've chosen it 1 because I'm not doing a satin stitch. I am doing a close but I still want to be able to see the zigzag. You see, it's close. That's why my stitch length is one. But I can still see the zigzag because I want the zigzag detail to be seen. It's close and I want it five so that it will jump and stick the two fabric together better. So that is what I want. So this is my setting, right? You can do your own setting, but it's just that it's, uh, you can have it more sparse. You can have it more sparse or more near entirely up to you this is the placement of this piece on my foundation right so i'm going to start you see the whole piece look like this right i have put a pin also to pin it so that it doesn't move see i pin it and i am going to start applying from this side come here go all the way and up come to here and i will come here right so, I'm at the corner so I'm using my hand wheel to do it so that I don't overshoot in my sewing right so I turn I lift up my presser foot and I turn and I come here
Let's have a look at what I've done. I have applique up. Right? So now I'm going to bring another piece to cover the rest of the space. Let's see what we can do. I want all the odd odd shapes. So I can do this here. Shall I? Right? So I will cut so I will sew around here to cover this part up right you see I will sew around here to cover this part up so I have sewed this part on now I'm going to cover this part. So I think um, I think I get I not this color again because this is the same. So I'm taking another piece. I thought this will match it well this way. So I'm going to cut this off here, the extras. Maybe I will need it another time. So here. I am going to bring it here. So I will pin it and go to the sewing machine and probably start um, start here, zigzag all around and come back here. So then I will have this shape. Right. Yes, to applique, stick it. So this one I thought since it's a triangle, I'm going to use this on for this corner right and i will also pin this down i will go to the sewing machine you see and i'm going to sew this part i'm going to applique this part only these corners i don't have to because it's the sides right so i'm just going to applique this and that's it and i thought that since i have this here that i need to cover I so happen I have this long piece I will be able to cover this up whole thing here right then I would almost have covered except for this part and I will look for a small piece to cover here so you notice that the very first piece that we sew on yeah all the the applique will be covered Right? So let me sew these two first, these two, and come back and show you before I put on this long piece. So I have sewn this piece here and sewn all of this down. Yes, so now the next piece I'm going to sew on top here, uh, covering the whole corner right up to here and we will sew one line down and one line down I'm going to sew this uh, off camera this is the panel done with all this sewn this part I don't think I'm going to put one patch here because here this will be the border and when we make it I uh, you will understand because we're going to do rag here so I don't think I will cover this part. So let's see the two strips that we have done. They are made of the same one, two, three, four, five, five fabric, and but with different design, different look. I looked at the panel and I thought it looks very plain because two big piece here, right? So I want to add some detail to it by putting one piece here. Just like that. So I will zigzag around this part to make this extra detail so that it's like because this here this piece has some interest 
and this one is uh, looking a bit plain you know yeah with these two big pieces so I'm just going to add this here to add some interest to the whole thing I thought I thought I want to remind you about turning corners in your beginner's sewers course if you are one of my participants at my course I would have uh, 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 highlighted to you that when you are doing applique or zigzag and turning corners you see when your needle because we are doing zigzag right so it goes left right left right left right so when you are turning corners this is a corner here when you're turning corners remember your needle left right left right your needle have to be on the right and needle position down before you turn the corners so here this is what I'm going to show you All right so I'm coming straight the needle is going left right left right so I'm reaching the corner I go a further a little bit more and I will use the hand wheel to go this is the needle is going right left I'm still not at the corner yet so go back right right I'm at the right then only my needle is at the right then only I turn corner okay I still cannot fully turn I think one more knee, one more one more time one time left right okay now I turn the corner reaching another corner okay left right left go right now my needle is at the right I turn the corner right so that's how we uh, turn corners just want to show you the corners where I have turned and show you see the corners that I have turned because it's red hopefully you can see so I have turned this way this is how ton corners should be turned when we go right then we go over so these are proper corners turn right can see the corners the two corners so let's have a look at the whole piece now it has more details instead of just two big patches so I have this detail here some details here some details here and I have this big detail here I think it makes it more interesting because that's the kind of look we are going for with, with lots of patches going on right so here I'm going to cut this off yes right so because these are very um, very busy right so I'm going to have a plain color strip between the two so plain color so busy plain busy and then there will be a plain okay so 